Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our live stream here from Strain Presbyterian Church. Uh, if you're part of our congregation, welcome. If you're part of another congregation, welcome as well. This is all about God's family as we meet together and as we worship together. And I trust that today, as we do this simplified service, that we really would know God's presence, God's peace, God's blessing. So welcome along this morning. Um, I have two announcements for you this morning, just to let you know about things. Um, one is a thank you. So first of all, thank you to everybody who came along on Tuesday of this past week to donate food for um, Storehouse and also to drop in envelopes and such like the church and have a little chat. It was great to see everybody as you came along. Thank you for the great support with all the food. Um, John Scott and I were able to go to Storehouse and we filled six large trolleys full of everything that you had donated. So thank you so much indeed um, from ourselves. Thank you from Storehouse as well. This makes a huge difference um, as they try to help those families who are struggling, those families who are in need at this time. So thank you so much for all that you did. Um, if lockdown continues the way we suspect it might do, then we'll do the same again um, towards the end of June, uh, just to, to keep that help going and, and to be practical. And then the second announcement is just to say that this is the last Sunday and even the, that um, William Henry is our moderator. Tomorrow night, uh, there will be a virtual service Normally, it would be the start of General Assembly. We'd be meeting up in Church House um, for uh, meetings all week, but obviously that's not happening this year. So tomorrow night, there will be an online virtual service for the installation of our new moderator, David Bruce. So that's gonna be at seven o'clock. The link is on um, PCI's website. I'll put a link up to that later on today. Uh, it will go live, they said, at about a quarter to seven, with the service starting at seven o'clock. Uh, so just to let you know about that. And if you can, log on and watch. Uh, and just to see that service. It's completely different this year and how it's happening. Uh, completely different how many, so many different things are happening. But we can still join together, just like we're doing this morning, uh, through technology. So please, if you can, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. for David Bruce's service. That would be great. That's great. I only have two announcements this morning. No big, long sh shape of announcements. Now we get to the fun part, the really good part, our birthday blessings. Um, a number of people have been in touch with me this morning already to let me know during the week about birthdays. Um, so if you happen to flash it up on the screen, I might see it, I may not. So apologies if I don't see it, but I'll go through the ones that I have here. First of all, sorry I missed this one last week, but just to say that somebody has missed their first time coming to the front here in Strain for their first birthday. Maisie, Maisie McClyman, Stuart, it was one just last week. Uh, so happy birthday to Maisie. I'm sure that was a great day in the household. Uh, now, going from one to someone who's slightly older, somebody has a very special birthday tomorrow. Somebody will be 60 tomorrow. So sorry I've let the cat out of the bag. But Charlotte Cunningham, happy birthday for tomorrow. Uh, I trust that you have a really good day. Uh, somebody else, they've got their birthday today. It's Emily Gillespie's birthday. You're five today. And I hear there's going to be uh, mermaids and everything going on at your house later on. So have a lovely birthday as well. Nicola Warden, you've got a birthday as well. Um, it's been quite eventful, not only a birthday, but also um, six months married as well. Rude. Rudy, um, it's your birthday as well. I just see, notice that as well. So all the way from Switzerland. So happy birthday to Rudy also. Um, Lucy Rankin, you were 13 last Thursday, so happy birthday for that. And tomorrow, Hannah Patton will be nine. So again, happy birthday to everybody for that. It's great to have all these birthday blessings, just to remind us that we are a family all together. So let me pray for everybody who's had a birthday or who's got a birthday coming up. Uh, let's pray together. Lord, thank you that from here in Newton Arge, right the way around, and even over to Switzerland, we can be united as a family as we think about birthdays. Uh, Lord, we think about all those who've had birthdays, all those who've got birthdays today or coming up over the next few days. Lord, just be with everybody. And we ask that you be with their families, that you would bless them and be close to them, we pray. So Lord, thank you now as we gather in your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today is Pentecost Sunday. This is a Sunday when um, we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit. 
somebody who God had promised, who Jesus had promised. Let me read to you uh, these words that are found in John 14. Jesus speaks them just before he goes to the cross. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. This is a great day, a glorious day whenever we come to worship God because it is Pentecost Sunday. It is a day whenever we remember what God has given to us. And we'll think about that later on in our service whenever we come to um, our Bible passage in Ephesians and thinking about what it means there. But let's pause at this time. Let's give thanks for this morning. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for Sunday, a day which for us is different. So many days are different at this time, Father, but thank you that today is still that bit different again, because today is the day whenever we pause to, to, to dwell upon you, to think about you, to spend time with you, to slow down from the hustle and bustle of life, to remember all that you have done for us. Father, you have done everything for us. You made us, created us. You give us this world. You love us and care for us. You sent Jesus to be our saviour. And then, Father, you have given us the Holy Spirit, part of you, to dwell in us, to help us, to guide us, to remind us, to be with us at all times. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your, your great goodness to us. And as we just, in a different way, worship you this morning, we ask that you be near to us. Lord, for many folks, maybe they are still anxious about what's going on. For many, it's the uncertainty of future, of jobs, what's going to happen in the next few weeks, the next few months. Father, thank you that in the midst of all of that uncertainty, we have things that we are certain of, things that we can rely upon. Your love for us, your care for us, your presence with us, your blessing. So Lord, help us to draw strength from those, especially this morning, and be near us and help us, we pray, in Christ's name. Amen. Now, boys and girls, I wonder, were you watching online last week? Did you see me talking about a piece of fruit last week? And can you remember what that piece of fruit was? I'll give you a clue. It was yellow and it was slightly bendy. Have you got it? Yes, it was a banana. We were talking about that. So this morning I want to talk about a different fruit. Now, some people like bananas, some people don't. Some people don't like the texture, the thickness, you know, the taste. This is a fruit that most people would like. And if you didn't like to eat it, then maybe you might like to drink the juice of it. Now, I wonder, can you guess what it is? Sometimes, again, it might be green. Sometimes it might be red, or it could be a mixture of colours. You might even have like a bit of a yellowy tinge in it, but like the one I've got here, which is a mixture of red and a greeny yellow. Yep, it's an apple. Now look at that nice big red shiny side to it. And if I turn it around, I wonder, do you like an apple? Do you? Do you find an apple tasty? Um, you know, apples come in all sorts of varieties. You get some apples which are not all that nice to eat because they're called, straight off the tree, because they're called cookers. And they're best if you use them for things like apple tart and apple crumble. Maybe you like things like a stewed apple. Um, then you get other apples, which you can eat straight off the tree, which are really sweet or crispy. Maybe you like a, a Granny Smith. Maybe you like a Golden Delicious or a Gala. They're, they're all sorts of different apples. But there's one thing which we have a saying about all apples. And the saying is, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now, do you think that's really true? Do you really think that if you ate an apple every day, it would keep you healthy enough that you didn't need to see a doctor? I don't think so. Yeah, there's, it's good fibre in it, especially if you eat the skin. And there's a few um, nutrients in it. So there's some natural sugars in it as well. But it's not that rich in vitamins and minerals. It's, it's not the richest of fruits that way. Um, and it certainly can't heal you. It certainly can't make you better. It certainly cannot replace a doctor. 
Uh, maybe at the minute lots of people are frightened to go to the doctors because of this coronavirus and they're all staying away. And the doctors simply, well, please come and see us. We can help you. Um, doctors are great. They've been given gifts by God to help us. But again, they have a limit to what they can do. There's only one person who can heal everything, and that's God. And in the Bible, we do read about different miracles which God does through different people and through Jesus, and whenever he heals people. We thought about one earlier on in lockdown, whenever I talked about a man called Naaman, who had leprosy, and he was told to go and bathe in a certain river seven times, and he'd be healed. And he was. God took away his leprosy. You know, lots of people want to be made better. And we want to be healed. That's why we go to see people like doctors and surgeons. And quite often we pray and we ask God to make us better. What we forget is how God really makes us better. It's not through an apple a day helping to keep the doctor away. It's not through fixing something which is wrong with us physically. But God heals us inside. In that if we trust him, if we let him into our lives, um, if we have faith. There's lots of words that we use, boys and girls, but it's just trusting God and asking him to be our saviour. And then he heals us in the inside. He takes away our sin, he makes us better, and he helps us to follow him. Well, it's not, it's not easy. I'm going to talk about the, to the adults about that later on. It's hard as we follow God. But God helps us each and every moment, so he does. And he is always with us. So maybe later on today, if you're feeling hungry and you want something sweet to eat, and maybe mum or dad says at home, no, no, don't have something sweet, have an apple instead. Or maybe tomorrow, if you go to have a little snack and you see the fruit bowl sitting and you see an apple, remember that phrase, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. But then remember that an apple can't make you better, but God can. We just need to trust God. Let me pray with you boys and girls this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love us so much. Thank you that you sent Jesus to be our saviour. Help us just to trust you. Lord, thank you that you do make us better with you. You take away our sins and you bring us into a close walk with you each day. So Father, thank you and continue with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, to the parents, grandparents of all the boys and girls who are out there, the, this series about fruit um, is part of the series, but like what we've been doing in Sunday school. So there is also for it a take-home sheet. So I will post the take-home sheet um, on Facebook later on so that you can see it. Um, if you think you would find the, 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 the story useful as well for the boys and girls, if you would like that, just send me a little message and let me know, and I can post a picture of the story as well so that you would have that material to use at home if you want. Now, we're going to read God's word together. So let me grab a drink. We're going to be continuing in our series in Ephesians this morning. Um, so we're going to read together Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. Let's hear what God's word says. This is the New Living Translation. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers in this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Also pray for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given to me, so I will fiercely, 
fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Amen. And we ask that God would bless the reading of his word. Let's pause, let's come together, and let's pray this morning. Um, as I said, there's a new moderator coming in, so let's pray for William Henry as he will be returning to his congregation. Hopefully he'll get a little bit of time off now before he goes back, but then as he goes back in to, to pick up the reins in the church again, it, that's a challenging time, so let's pray that God would help William. And for David Bruce as he comes in as moderator in this difficult time, in this time still of lockdown, as things are changing, we pray that God will be with David and help him. And let's pray that God will be with us all this morning, um, as especially on this Pentecost Sunday. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you again that we can come to you, that we can pause, that we can pray, that we can think about you and all that you have done for us. Again, Lord, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit. Thank you that your Spirit lives in us, guiding us, directing us, telling us and teaching us and, and reminding us of all the truths from your words. Lord, help us to listen to your Spirit and to obey. This morning we remember um, William Henry as he conducts his last service, Lord, as moderator. And Lord, we pray that he would get a little bit of time off now, that he'd be able to relax for a while. It's been a busy year, especially these last few weeks. It's been a challenge. So I ask you to be with him and his family and just protect them. And then as he goes back into church again, Lord, again, we know this is a, a difficult and a challenging time as you go back to the rhythms of parish life. Just be with him. Again, help him and equip him for whatever he may face. And Lord, for David Bruce, as he steps out of church house and into the role of moderator, again, this, this will be a challenging year. Uh, there's so many different things going on. I just ask you to be with David, that you would give him wisdom. You would give him a, just a real sense of your presence and peace, real anointing of your spirits, as he would lead our church through these days. And Lord, as we look towards coming out of lockdown and being able to meet together as a fellowship here in church and in churches right the way around the world, we ask that you would help us in that process, guide us, may we be wise, may we not be foolish and rush into things, but may we consider it and think about those who are vulnerable, how we can help them and protect them. Lord, just be with us all, we pray. We need you, the sense, we need your presence. We just need to know that you're with us every minute of every day. Help us, Lord, whenever we struggle, to reach out to you and just take your hand and to hold on to it and to know that you're there. So, Father, we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let me ask you a question this morning. If you've watched television in the past before, um, I wonder, have you ever seen an ad, or did you, do you remember the ad that was for Duracell batteries? And I wonder if you remember the ad where it was a little bunny rabbit who had a drum kit, and the bunny rabbit was constantly drumming up and down, and it was all about the different types of batteries, and, and how one after another, these little bunny rabbits ran out of energy, their drumming got slower and slower until it stopped, but there was one bunny that kept on going, and that was the rabbit that had the Duracell batteries in it. And it kept on drumming and drumming and drumming. And the ad was all about how we should have Duracell batteries in us. I wonder, do you feel a bit like some of those other um, bunnies this morning? Do you feel tired? Do you feel exhausted? Do you feel that you can't go on? Uh, is, it, is it particularly hard? And it's not maybe just because of COVID and because of lockdown, but it's just life in general. Is life difficult? Is it a struggle? If we were all honest, we would say, yes, life is a struggle. For all of us, there are times whenever it's like walking through trickle, where we just cannot seem to get one foot past another, and all we want to do is lie down and sleep or give up. We don't have the energy. And as we try to follow God, as we try to live our lives for him, I wonder, do you feel that way as well? Do you feel that it's just too hard too difficult. How can I do this? I can't keep going. It's just, it's impossible for me. Do you feel that way? Yeah? Good. Because then we start to realise something. 
Then we start to realize the first verse that we read together. Paul said, he uses the word finally because because he's coming near the end of this letter. He says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We're about to go into a part of Ephesians which talks about how we live for God. And it's a part which is very honest. It's a part which recognizes a spiritual battle, which is why, again, we need God's Holy Spirit. So that's why it's appropriate for today, Pentecost Sunday. Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. He doesn't say be strong in your power. He doesn't say be strong in your own strength because we don't have strength. You know, if we try to live our lives for God, if we try to do what is right, if we're determined, right, this is what I'm going to do, and we set out to do it ourselves, 100% guarantee you, you will fail. All of us fail whenever we try to do things in our own strength because we can't, because we are weak, we are flawed, we are full of inadequacies. We just can't do it. And we need to realize something. We need to realize that we need to surrender ourselves to God and draw our strength from him. We can't do it. And that theme runs all the way through the Bible. I've got a couple of verses this morning which just mention it. I mean, the Psalms are full of David and other Psalmists saying about how they are failing, how they are falling, and how they turn to God for strength. One is Psalm 76, verse 26. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is is the strength of my heart, my portion forever. Then you turn to Joshua. Um, As God talks to Joshua, he reminds him of this. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua was afraid. Joshua said, I can't do this, God. You're calling me. You're telling me that I'm going to go and do something. I can't. I'm only a person. And God said, don't worry. I will be with you. I will be your strength. I will lead you and guide you. I will give you what you need. And then another passage, which is lovely, which talks about it as well, is Isaiah 40. This is a passage we quite often use at the funeral, but this is a passage which applies to all of us. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary. He increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fail. But those who hope is in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Right the way through the Bible, we are told that we are weak. We are feeble. We can't do things ourselves. But God is with us. God gives us the strength that we need. And whenever we are followers of Christ, whenever we are Christians, that strength comes from the one who God gives us to live in us. Just as it says in John 14, as Jesus said to the disciples, you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. We have God's Holy Spirit. God gives us part of him to live inside us, to give us strength, to remind us whenever we're doing things wrong, to to remind us that we are in a struggle, to remind us that we are his. And whenever we have those doubts, whenever someone, Satan, whoever tries to tell us, you're, you're not good enough, you're not a Christian, so look at what you do. God reminds us, yeah, you might get it wrong, but it's me living in you. It's my strength that you need. And that's what carries us through. So right at the very start of this passage, it's wonderful to know that what we do is not in our strength, but in God's strength. He gives us what we need. And this passage talks about what God gives us to help us every day. Now, verse 11 does say, put on the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, 
and against all the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. Paul tells us that we face a battle. Paul lived in a time when there were soldiers all around. Many of us of a certain age, we grew up seeing soldiers on our streets. You know, we're used to that battle scenario. Paul, it was the Roman soldiers. He saw them around him all the time. And there was that real sense of people wanted rid of them. But Paul tried to tell them that the battle is not what you can see in front of you. It's not this physical battle with soldiers. It's not this physical fight against the people who you see as your enemy in people. But the battle is against unseen forces. We can't see God. We can't see Jesus. The disciples did at the time, but he's in heaven now. We can't see him. We can't see Satan or any of his fallen angels, but we know that they roam this earth, causing us trouble, causing us torment, uh, t- tempting us as well at times, doing all sorts to us. We are in a spiritual battle. If we align ourselves with God, if we say that we are a Christian, that we follow the teachings of Jesus, if we say that we belong to God we, and we let God into our lives and we have the Holy Spirit, then we become soldiers in God's army because we become part of that spiritual battle. If you've never trusted God, if you've never, um, you know, you've never let God into your life, Satan doesn't bother you. He leaves you alone because you're not trying to go against the one who he sees as his enemy. But once we align ourselves with God, then we get into a spiritual battle, a battle which is hard, a battle which will drain us, a battle for which we don't have the strength. But again, we come back to relying on God's strength. But make no mistake, folks, this is a fight. Now, that might seem strange for some people. Some people think of God as a God of love, a God of peace. Some people even think that the God who we read about in the Old Testament and the New Testament are two different gods. They're not. There's a battle that goes on the whole way through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. And in Revelation, we see how God completely wins that battle and vanquishes all evil. That's the battle which we are involved in, the battle which we are part of, the battle which God equips us for. But here's the thing. It says that we need to put on the full armor of God. Now, armor is made up of a number of different parts. Some people put on a little of it. Some people put on a lot of it. If you, if you see people, if you see fight scenes from of old, if you think of um, an, a knight on a horse, as you see a knight riding in, you might see a, a knight in full armor, even helmets and everything. Then you might see a foot soldier behind him who's maybe only wearing maybe a, a breastplate and carrying a, a shield and a sword. They don't have other bits of armor. You know, people would have in the past picked and chosen what bits of armor to put on. God tells us we need to put on all of his armor for this battle because all of it locks together and works together and and they all work together. Just like how we as Christians should all work together in and fight together in this battle. Struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against dark powers, against spiritual forces. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. God wants us to stand firm. God wants us to stand up for him. God doesn't want us to be knocked down and trampled on. God wants us to be able to stand up tall and firm sometimes we'll do that sometimes we'll fail the times whenever we fail is whenever we try to do it in our strength the times whenever we stand tall and stand firm is whenever we do it in his strength whenever we rely upon God we get a whole list of armor and over the next couple of weeks we're going to look at this armor and you might think at times and you know, you'll, you'll pick and choose bits of armor and we'll look at this bit or look at that bit. But I have to think that the order that this comes in is not an accident, but that this armor is intentional. That the order it comes in is intentional. 
I was talking with a friend during the week and we were talking about this and um, talking about head knowledge and heart knowledge. And quite often we talk about in church how, you know, we have head knowledge, but it has to become heart knowledge. But we have to hear these things first. We have to understand these things. And as you look at this armor, it's all about seeing God, hearing God, understanding and listening about who God is, and then how God then gets into our lives and transforms us. And the, the order of this armor is quite like that. It says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Now, it might seem strange starting with um, a belt, first of all. But a belt, well, you can translate this several different ways. If it's a belt, a belt does go on, normally after everything else, to hold all the armor together. Another way that some people translate this belt of truth as they look at the word is nearly like an, an undergarment, like a vest. Putting a vest on first before you start to put everything else on. If you were to put on armor just rough against your skin, it would, it would irritate, it would hurt, it would be sore. So a soldier would tend to put on like a protective layer, first of all, um, which they wear underneath everything else. Now, Paul says that this is the belt of truth. What is the truth? Well, the truth is who God is. You know, we live in a world today which quite often tries to deny the existence of God. Our world tries to say, oh, no, there's no, there's no such thing as God. Science can explain everything. We can explain how the world was made. We can explain how everything came together. Um, we can explain things through evolution uh, and through uh, how we grow in knowledge every day. The, the world tries to explain that. The world denies the existence of God. But I believe in the Bible. I believe the Bible is true. I believe it's God's words. I believe it. I believe that God's word tells us that um, everything that is in there is true. That God made us. That God loves us. He created this world and everything around us, and that He is always with us. That's the truth of who God is. The other truth is that God sent Jesus to be our Savior, Jesus who loves us and cares for us. And we need to hear that truth, first of all, for everything else to start to fall into place. If we don't believe in God, how can we believe in Jesus as a saviour? How can we believe in what Jesus did for us by dying on the cross and rising again? How can we believe in the Holy Spirit who helps us and gives us strength? If we don't believe in God. If we don't accept that God is true. C.S. Lewis set out to disprove God. He, 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 he was convinced, and in the end, he said he had to come kicking and screaming to faith, knowing that God is true, because he couldn't deny the Bible and everything it teaches. We have to start with truth. You know, we, we always talk about how the truth will set us free. Well, if we can recognize the truth that God is real, that God made us, that Jesus has done all this for us, then everything else starts to open up and everything else starts to change and we see things in a different way. Do you believe this morning in the truth of God? If you do, then great. See how God changes and how God guides you in everything. If you don't believe that truth yet, why not? If you open your eyes to the world around you, how could all this happen by accident? How could all this happen without a designing hand behind it? God is real. God is out there. God loves you and God cares for you. He sent Jesus as your saviour. He gives us the Holy Spirit day by day to help us and guide us. Think about that this week. Think about how God can give you strength this week. For those of you who already know Christ, who already follow God, yes, as you struggle this week, reach out and ask God for his strength. Ask God to give you the strength that doesn't come from you, but from him. And rely upon him this week, for he will help you. He will carry you through. He will give you the strength that you need. And whenever you face challenges, whenever you face temptation, rely upon God, hand it over to him, ask him for that strength. And again, he will give you that strength. He will be with you and guide you through that. That's the God who we have. Over the next few weeks, let's look at the rest of that armor, what it means to us and how we use it as we follow God and live for him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day.
Thank you again for your Holy Spirit and for all that it means for us to have your Spirit living in us. Lord, for the difficulties, for the challenges that we will face this week, we ask for your strength. Lord, we recognize that we can't do it, but we thank you that through us, that you will give us the strength that through your Spirit and that we will be able to stand tall for you, to stand firm for you and to hold on to you. So Lord, help us. Give us your strength, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Thanks, folks, for joining with us this morning. It's been great to have you along. Trust that this incoming week, again, you continue to know God's peace and God's blessing. And just again, as we meet this week, we'll be meeting Monday to Friday at nine o'clock for Bible readings. Uh, Please join with us. And again, remember, tomorrow night, seven o'clock, the moderator being installed. If you can, I'll put up the link or go to PCI's homepage on the web and you'll be able to see the link there and follow it from there. But God bless. Take care. See you soon. Bye.